Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So cryptic shooters are at it again. They're trying to sell those refinement packs. And what have they done? Well, they've added two new companions to it. Corbin the Venerated along with Minsk, which actually increases the value of this pack significantly. Now, Ksuna's in this pack and she used to be like the best companion that everybody wanted. And yes, this was a very viable place to get her as she was very expensive back in the day. You can see with prices like over 5 million. So it was viable to get those packs then. However, even with them introducing Minsk, I still feel getting this pack is pretty much a ripoff. It's highly unlikely they've done anything with the drop rates. Excuse these old enchantments that were in there. This was when I opened it. And we found that the drop rates seem to be about 5%. You'd need to open at least 20 of these to have a good chance to get it to drop for you. You can, of course, just open one and get very lucky and get that Neverwinter Elite Pack. Additionally, you're just getting some teal diamonds. And with Module 23, refinement has become dirt cheap as all hell. You can see like brilliant diamonds going for less than 2,000 and that's already 25,000 refinement points. You find your teal diamonds and they're listing them at like 16k for two of them. That's 8k. Again, that's like dirt cheap for this insane amount of refinement points. That's like 890,000 astral diamonds for nearly 10 million refinement points. So for me, this just feels like a scam. And adding Minsk into it and Corbin, has that made it any better? Well, you can have a look and the rumors have been going around that still the lockbox of Justice is one of the best opens and it's got Minsk, so people have been opening it and there are a bunch of Minsks on the auction house. More than late, at least what I've seen. This Minsk price used to be like 1.6 million. I mean, 950k, that's all right. However, I would recommend getting an account-wide one if you're serious about having lots of alts but do the math for yourself how many alts are you going to play that realistically need a minsk whether or not they count wide is worth for you personally they should at least have the companions from this elite pack all be account wide so we've got every single one of those companions and we're just going to test them out and see how they compare and figure out which one's the best that you should be using at least from the pack and ultimately compare against overall in the game now again here's the pack and this is what it will look like again most of them are all purple there with alphonse Knox being legendary and corbin also being legendary which is pretty unique companion corbin he's like your trainee npc that you'll meet to the very beginning of the game in that training arena a very fancy place and he does have the utility power of giving recharge speed which i cannot rate as very high yes i have tested and it does seem to affect companions damage but just having higher recharge speed for a dps character is not too great as you're generally better off with a more reliable bonus like from minsk to increase your overall damage from your at wills dailies everything Thing. Recharge speed is only going to help you with your encounter powers. So just looking through these real quick, we can see Celeste. She is somewhat of a healer companion, but testing her out, she doesn't heal for much at all. And I wouldn't run her as a healer. Her Celeste's wisdom, also I wouldn't run as a, like a tank for the utility, for the healing benefit, as it has a 30 second cooldown, making it pretty useless. Xuna, she is pretty unique and she does have that bloodbath and she used to be insane. However, she's been nerfed so heavily. We'll go into exactly how much damage she's dealing on a dummy in a second, but we have her offensive power, which also testing that out, we can see Xuna's wisdom deals about 2% of our damage just when we're attacking with at wills. So if we use our encounters and our dailies and our mounts, Xuna's wisdom is going to be less than 1% of our overall damage. Not worth it at all. Then you have Maycos with just defense and deflect. Yes, decent for a tank right there. Sergeant Knox, defense and accuracy. Not really good for anybody in my opinion. Alphonse Knox, crit severity and combat advantage. Good for damage dealers who need those stats. And then Minsk, which is one of the best companions to have in your defensive slot as a damage dealer. Against bosses, you're dealing 8.6% extra damage, which is better than just having a 7.5% increase from something like Black Dragon's Ironstone. The normal companions generally only give you up to 7.5%. You have some exceptions. 
exceptions, like Batiri giving up to 11%, Wild Hunt Rider also 11%, and Minsk an exception to go in your defense slot with an 8.6%. Awesome, not too great in AoE, but very good in single target boss fights. And then you have Corbin with the utility power of a 10% chance on encounter use to gain recharge speed. My opinion, not worth it at all potentially on a bard where you're spamming encounters anyway but i still wouldn't say it's great so with that let's get these all checked out and tested against these dummies so we just are in chult here and we can let's say have our sergeant Knox or alphonse Knox this one and have him attack the dummy and we can record the damage he deals on our act log. So checking Alphonse Knox's damage, his encounter DPS nearly 20,000. You can check my document linked below with all of the single target damage companions ranked and you can see like the pseudo dragon dealing like nearly 40,000 encounter DPS. So Alphonse is dealing like half as much. His power setup you can see just there. All he does is just the attack the target with his axe there just swinging it. He can hit multiple targets so can be okay in AoE, but with that kind of DPS output, not great. So next up, we have Celeste. She does have some damaging abilities, like her sunburst to hit everybody around her, along with like flame strike to knock up CC a little bit, but mostly single target, a little bit of AoE, not something I would consider too great. And yes, we can see from her DPS, she is in part a healer, so she only deals like 11,500 encounter DPS nothing to gawk at. Next up we have Corbin which does have a few interesting powers like charging at the enemy, throwing a fireball and we can see when we attack the dummy here he will go and just mainly swing with his sword every now and again tossing a fireball at them and charging them. There's the fireball just there and then it causes the area to burn which can again be helpful in AoE but checking his DPS we can see with the fireball the burning field it's only like just over 1000 and then himself you can see about 25 about 26,000 encounter DPS so in total about 27,000 encounter DPS. Definitely one of the best ones we've seen just yet in terms of damage output. But we'll move on to Makos, which is another legend. And you could get Lich Makos just recently on Mythic. Has the ability to throw fireballs, cast meteors on the ground, as we can see here. Pretty random and don't generally hit the main target all the time. But his damage is pretty underwhelming. We can see about 11,500 DPS. So... Again, not a companion I would use for damage. Next up, we have Minsk, which interestingly does have the buff ability by increasing everybody's combat advantage. And this ability you will see when he creates this blue area. My combat advantage 52.2. When he finishes casting the area, 55.2. So in fact, instead of 5%, he's only giving 3%. It would be better if it was 5%. But it doesn't last for very long that buff you can see it's gone and then it won't be triggered again for another 10-15 seconds so there's quite a long downtime not much uptime and otherwise he's just swinging with his sword there and attacking the one target again can deal a little bit of aoe damage but nothing special and his damage is yeah not great, nearly 17,000 encounter DPS, but nothing in comparison to the top. So next up we have Sergeant Knox, which is very similar to Alphonse Knox. Again, he's just got the same abilities, pretty much just copy and paste. And we can check out his damage even less than Alphonse at only like 10,800. Again, you can see Alphonse Knox here at nearly 20,000. And they use the exact same abilities of Wicked Strike and Reaping Strike. So technically, there shouldn't be a difference between them, but evidently there is. So ultimately, we go to Xuna, which is still in a very sad state. She has that awesome bloodbath, but unfortunately, it only tickles the enemies. And her DPS is nearly 12,000, which again is minuscule compared to the top damage dealing companions in their current state. So there's a link in pretty much every video where you can access this document for yourself. It's my companion testing document. So that concludes the testing of that refinement pack with the Neverwinter Elite Pack. Complete waste of money if you ask me, aside from Minsk. If the price of Minsk went way up or you just got significantly lucky on the pack, maybe it's worth it. But the pack has really 
gone down significantly in price. It's only at like 1.4 million. Keep an eye out on these packs and the price of Minsk. If Minsk ends up higher than the pack, then just buy the pack and get them there. The rest of the companions, my opinion, a waste of your money. So with that said, hopefully this was somewhat insightful and a bit of advice in terms of saving your Zen. Zen is particularly valuable. Don't go spending it on useless things. So again, if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.